I have a problem with organized religion. I don't really love it. Yeah. I, I think just I've, I've had problems with organized religion mm -hmm. myself, you know, like churchianity. I agree. Mainly, you know, because uh, for me, as you know, as pertains to Christianity, it's about a personal relationship with with Jesus mm -hmm. and with God. And, and it's, uh, you know, anytime you have uh, somebody in between that and, you know, a lot of times that's what the church was about, mm -hmm. you know, you know, going back to selecting which books were going to be in the Bible, you know, that. They had that uh, Council of Nicene where they decided what, what it was going to be. And, right. And it, it gets away from what it originally was, I think. I agree with you 100%. I've always said that anything that goes between you and your relationship with God is false. Like there shouldn't, there shouldn't be anything that is a step between that. Yeah. Because... But at the same time, I think the, there is the, you know, the church that Jesus set up. It did set up the church, and as you know, as it's supposed to function, and it's the way that it was originally supposed the to function. The body of believers, yeah. But then you have human yes. coming in uh, into that, and that uh, we just uh, all of us, we just have a way of messing all that up. <laughs> Which I love the title of your new album, a uh, Christian album for yeah, singers. Yeah, it's called Fallen. A, yes. gos a gospel record for sinners. I love that. Yeah, because we I all like are. to say I wanted to have the biggest possible audience. So that's yeah, what that is, and uh, um, it's it's kind of it's a it's my spiritual journey, I guess. You know, throughout my life, mm -hmm. it's like uh, songs that I grew up in church with in the Baptist church that I love, and uh, songs that I've written you know, right. that have to do with certain. Uh, times in my life it's a great record i really do love it oh and thank it's, you i appreciate that makes me feel good you know because i'm great. i'm the biggest sinner of all but i love jesus with all my heart well you uh, know? i'm the same you know i myself i i had a big problem with uh churchianity and uh you know as a kid growing up because it was kind of like to me about money and it uh and I I got disillusioned. I think I got into Eastern religions. You know, got into uh, drugs, and I got into you know uh, a lot of things. But I always kept my. Uh, I had a relationship with God, even if it was like I was going elsewhere. Yeah, I, mean, I read the Dhammapada. I read the Bhagavad Gita as well. I read the Quran as as well as reading the Bible, and then. Uh, when it came around uh, about 1990, it was like when I'd had enough of, um, you know, getting high and stuff like that too yeah. much mm -hmm. that I uh, came around to uh, reading the Bible again. It was the red words of Jesus that mm -hmm. that uh, spoke to me. And that's really where my real personal relationship started. I with I, God. I love that because it is the red words of Jesus that and and people are so confused so often about what it means to be a believer. It's like, you know, I I can't go to church or I can't go to God until I've straightened up my life. Yeah. And it's just the opposite. It's, like the more messy your life is, the more you should go to God because he loves us unconditionally and meets us where we are. Yeah. yeah. People sometimes miss the point about that. And, you know, I think a lot of the judgment and stuff that seems to be associated with church and with, you know, uh, it's that we're already redeemed. We're already, we're sinners and that, but we're already forgiven for that. Yes. And it's, yeah. it's because, and it's free. And it's free. Yeah. Redeemed and we don't deserve means, it. you know, free. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's your a free gift. ticket. So you need to take all that and dump it and dump it on, mm -hmm. uh, on, on Jesus, on God, because it's, he wants you to live a, in the, that freedom. Absolutely. And he loves us. And, you know, anybody who has children understands that you have four ch kids. I have three. Three. Yeah. And I have three also. Yeah. And so, you know, as a parent that there is nothing your children could do 
nothing that would make you turn away from them yeah, or turn or give up on them or not love them or not forgive them or not be there for them. Yes. And we are, I mean, there's consequences. There are consequences. <laughs> yes. But as there are with God too. Yeah. For us too, as well. But, yeah. yeah. Because, there, because that's the thing. It's like, and we're just uh, sinful humans. Imagine how much more perfect God's love is for us. Right. You know, there's nothing we can do. I believe that could lose our salvation or whatever, but there are earthly consequences because we have free will. So we make decisions, bad decisions. And I don't think it's, you know, God works in a way of like, I'm going to punish you for what you did, but I will allow your life to get sort of screwed up. Yeah. This is a punishment. I think, you know, I think that Jesus actually came here as much to, you know, telling us about, about heaven after death but i think he also was teaching us how to have heaven on earth right here and and in that sense it's the uh what you call sin or whatever it is it's about if you live in this way if you live in this way and if you do in this way then you're going to feel in this way and you, your life is going to be changed by that right and it's like living in in uh having heaven on earth in Correct. other words instead of living in your shame and your uh you know all the guilt thing guilt anything that the, the world brings upon you and those are all lies from satan i mean the one command the biggest command that god has for us is to not worry yeah. and not fear yeah you know and i definitely struggle with that and that that's sinful i mean you you are not supposed to and but man, it's hard not to. And it's funny today. I just got on Amazon and I ordered four easy to read Bibles. Um, cause I'm always texting my kids on our group texts and I'm just like, you know, is everybody saved? Because, you know, every now and then I'll start worrying, which I shouldn't. And I, I have a strong belief in the rapture and pre-tribulation rapture. Mm -hmm. And so I want my children to be raptured. To be ready to be ready. And I don't want them to have to go through tribulation. And so, and they all are saved. I mean, they don't act like it, <laughs> but no, they, um, they all claim. Well, who does? Christ. <laughs> who does? I yeah. don't. Yeah. I mean, I do. And I think it's, you know, the biggest part of the biggest myths that people have when it comes to Christianity and religion is how do you treat people? I think that's how you really know whether or not somebody is truly saved. You can't judge it because it's between them and God. So you never know. I mean, but yeah. how people treat others is a big indicator, I believe. Yeah. It, it, that's, that's all about like you know, taking the log out of your own eye first. It's yes. It's really not my role to judge anybody else. Mm. Yeah, I do. I like I, to judge people, kind of though, but. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we all do in spite of it, you know. I'm, I'm bad at gossiping.